you're looking to get the latest updates from Microsoft 365, but don't want to spend hours sifting through the hundred or so announcements like me, stay tuned because in this episode, I'm going to be covering all the latest updates, changes, and enhancements that you don't want to miss. Okay guys, so diving in here, before I get started, just a quick reminder, I do supplement these videos with a blog post in the video description. If you wanna get more helpful links for all these announcements and more information, be sure to check that out after you watch this video. Getting started though, we're gonna start with Microsoft Teams as we usually do. This first announcement is related to audio only recording now available as an option for Teams meetings. This is giving users the ability as you can see here in the screenshot to select audio only so that it doesn't record or take capture of any screen sharing or cameras that were displayed within that meeting to provide some more privacy as part of that output. Timelines on this one's early October and be completed by late November. Next one here is related to introducing image search in Microsoft Teams. You can see that here in the screenshot with that global search bar as you can now use the surface images and they'll be shown here contextually in that bottom section of the search output. Timelines on this one's mid-November be complete by early December. Next one here I thought already existed but they're giving feature parity with letting users within a shared channel add applications into that channel. This previously was not supported and that exists across the other functions such as group chats as well as channels, regular channels I should say as part of this. Timelines on this one is early November and be complete by late November. Next one's also related to search here. This is giving users the ability to now quickly search for settings within Teams versus having to go into the settings section, navigate through various tabs to try to find what they're looking for. So I think that's helpful. This will roll out and complete in early November. Last one here for Microsoft Teams is related to the Teams Town Hall experience and bringing a higher quality video resolution, 1080p Full HD into the Teams Premium experience. So you do need to have Teams Premium licensing in order to get access to this functionality for Teams Town Hall events. But I think this is helpful for you know having more professional town halls, whether that be an external town hall that you're hosting or more of your internal all hands meeting as an example. So this will happen mid-December, be complete by late December. Hey guys, if you're looking to save hours performing Microsoft 365 security assessments and have client facing reporting at your fingertips in under 60 seconds, check out a tool that I built called Cloud Capsule, which allows you to automate Microsoft 365 assessments, and we mapped over 150 data points and baseline standards such as CIS and NIST. Within seconds, you'll have policy information and mappings across the entire Microsoft 365 suite in a single platform here that you can navigate. And within our baselines, we've recently mapped to the foundations benchmark from CIS. You can now see all of these controls with automated pass-fail evidence and evidence collection with full remediation steps for each control. So if this looks interesting and you wanna run a free scan on your environment or a client environment, head over to cloudcapsule.io and run a free assessment today. Shifting into the Microsoft 365 apps here, I'm not gonna spend long on this, but they are updating the icons yet again, visually speaking from a UI perspective across the Microsoft suite. Some of you may already be seeing this in your desktop apps today, but I just wanna show this, it's actually kind of a cool visual icon of how they've changed over time. But this will happen early October and end, you know, around that October timeframe as well too. Next, as we dive into SharePoint here, this first announcement is related to general availability of the tenant rename with no scale limitations. This is something that you might be doing as part of a merger and acquisition where you can rename SharePoint URLs. In my world, it comes up a ton when we talk about defederating GoDaddy tenants and making them regular Microsoft tenants, but they previously had a site count limitation in order for you to be able to do this. It's now waived um, as part of this. So now you can do that. And I'll link in my blog post steps on how you can do that process um, if you're going through one of those situations. This will happen early October and be complete by mid-October. Shifting into OneDrive here, this is a new workflow that they're building in for simplified file transfer for departing employees for OneDrive. So by default within Microsoft, whenever a user leaves the organization, the manager automatically gets access to their OneDrive if they have an assigned manager, but additionally, you could designate uh, individuals to get access to their OneDrive. This is streamlining more of that process here from a retention perspective. So when the OneDrive for that user is coming up to be completely deleted, they'll step through this workflow here where this user in this particular case will get in this email message related to the files they'll be able to go ahead and go through this process of potentially moving them to a different location. And then all users who had access to that file or that OneDrive, I should say, uh, will get another notification about that move. 
So it's a little bit more streamlined as part of that and helps with permanent deletion uh, concepts here that we would have with OneDrive as well too. So this will happen mid-October, be complete by early November. Shifting into Microsoft Intune here, this one is related to policy-based renewal pre-installed Microsoft Store apps. So this could be apps that normally you wouldn't want on a workstation that is part of a company, such as like Xbox apps and things like that, that we might actually be doing in different ways today as far as the uninstallation goes. This is specifically, as I show here in the comments, only related today for Windows 11 Enterprise and Windows 11 Education version 25H2. So it's very specific in the sense of the OS version that you do need. Can help on people running um, Windows 10 or sorry, Windows 11 Professional as an example. Uh, but this new policy is called Remove Default Microsoft Store Packages, and it is available in Tune as a configuration profile. I link in my blog post the steps on how to configure that, and it is available today. Shifting into Entra here, this first one I think is a great security enhancement for the Authenticator app that's going to detect and prevent use on a geo-broken or rooted device, um, such as an iOS or Android device. You can see here that you'll go through this progression, they're going through a progression as part of the rollout here, that it does involve warning the user before they completely eliminate their access and then they'll eventually get to the state where you need to reset your device and get it out of that uh, jailbroken or rooted state in order to access the Authenticator app. So this will happen starting in February of 2026 and the rollout will go all the way into the April timeframe. This next one here for intro I thought was also pretty cool as well too. This is in preview as of the time of this recording, but this is allowing you to start to transfer the source of authority that they're acronyming to SOA uh, to the cloud. If you're running a hybrid-based environment today with local Active Directory, you can begin to sever the connection of individual users and make them cloud-only users as you slowly transition away from on-prem or legacy systems. So there's more details that I'll link in my blog post, and there's certainly a video on Microsoft Mechanics I'll link as well too that's pretty helpful to understand more about the architecture and some of those underlying requirements. So shifting into Copilot here, this first one's related to Copilot Plus PCs. They've come out and there's a lot of marketing around this behind the new functionality they built into Windows 11 with Copilot. And it includes certain features that are more agentic in nature like being able to talk or screen share on your screen and chat with Copilot to take certain actions or to help you craft you know, new emails, things like that. So it's a little bit more immersive than we've seen in the past. There's certainly a lot to pack with this announcement, but I'll link more in the video description here, again, in my blog post as part of this. Next one here is related to Microsoft shifting the underlying GPT model, the GPT-5, for the default Copilot model. And I think if you guys use Copilot at all, this is a blessing because the old model really doesn't give you a whole lot of great answers. Comparatively speaking, the GPT-5 does take longer to produce the responses, which is why they give you this option here, as you can see here in the screenshot, to get more of a quick answer as part of that. And this timeline here to make this the default is late October, be complete by late November. It is in a state where you can toggle it on today if you're in the Copilot chat experience. Next one here is related to users being able to access Copilot for a shared mailbox. You can see that here in the example with a help desk inbox. I think that's a great um, example here to produce that you might want to be doing some Copilot uh, prompting with. In this case, they're just summarizing that inbox. This one actually rolled out at the end of last month, so you should be able to access that at the time of this recording. Same thing here with the next announcement, it's very similar in nature, but it's for delegated mailbox access. So you can think about an executive assistant or something like that that wants to come over the CEO's emails. Um, this came out in the same time frame here, but it is giving them the ability there to comb through another user's inbox. Next one here is related to AI video generation now available in Create for all users, not just licensed users of Microsoft Copilot. Um, this is something you can use for free in that Create section here, as you can see in that screenshot. Timelines on this one's mid-November and be complete by late November. Next one here is session persistence for Copilot chat. If you've used Copilot chat and gone through this experience, you'll know the pain point around this, but it's effectively saying, when you used to go into Copilot chat, started a prompt, maybe navigated away from that chat and did something else or got a Teams chat that you went and navigated to and responded to, when you came back, there was no persistence of that last prompt that you gave or the question you asked. So you kind of lost that. 
And so this is actually going to persist it, move it into the left hand navigation for your chat history, like you would see normally in, in a tool like ChatGBT as an example, so that you can easily return to that conversation. Timelines on this one is very specific, but it's here at the end of October. Next one here for Copilot is Teams channel availability in the context IQ prompt. Context IQ prompt, if you're not familiar with that, is basically just giving users the ability to click on forward slash or find different contextual elements within their ecosystem, such as files or individual people or channels, as an example in this use case that you can see here in the screenshot, and use that as the contextual information that Copilot's going to source and try to answer the user's question or you know, summarize the things that they want as part of that. Timelines on this one's early November and be complete by late November. Last section here for the admin section, this is probably common knowledge for most of us here, but I wanted to call it out. Windows 10 has reached end of support. So a lot of us have been preparing for this for months at this point, but just another call out here that the support for security updates is now over. So you will no longer get security updates to Windows 10 unless you purchase the add-on SKU of extended security updates for Windows 10. Otherwise, you do need to upgrade today from a security perspective. And the very last announcement here is related to Defender for Office 365, which is enhancing the quarantine experience for administrators. So this is effectively saying that we're updating some of the experience, the most important of which is in the recipient section. They used to combine the recipients here, comma separated if that was applicable, and now they're gonna route these into their own individual line items with a single recipient listed. And the key factor outside of the general UI behind that is when you click on release, all in this particular case, it's obviously just gonna to release to that one recipient versus all the recipients that might've been part of a group email or something like that. So just keep that in mind. I think it's helpful if you are an admin or a tech um, that is you know, looking at quarantine emails today. This will happen early November and be complete mid-December. Okay guys, that's everything I had for you today. Definitely comment below with any of the features you're most excited about. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next week.